Ghana's president, Nana Akufu-Addo, has hinted at easing restrictions in Ghana, citing the need for normalcy. In an address to the nation, on Sunday, he said consultations would be concluded at the end of the week, after which he would announce a roadmap for easing restrictions. The president explained that the plan to ease restriction was based on the low fatality rate. So far, as at Tuesday, 26th of May, Ghana had recorded 6,808 cases and 32 deaths. According to the World Health Organization, Mr. Akufu Addo said the number of severe cases that required hospitalization and ventilation has also remained consistently low. Ghana had imposed a three-week lockdown on three major cities identified as coronavirus hotspots in March. In another story, a 95-year-old World War II veteran is making the headlines in Ghana. Private Joseph Hammond has set himself to raise funds for frontline workers and vulnerable veterans across Africa by walking two miles a day for a week. The former World War veteran fought with the British Army in Burma in the Gold Coast Regiment of the Royal West African Frontier Force. His mission is to raise money for the purchase of personal protection equipment for frontline workers as well as for vulnerable veterans in Commonwealth countries. Those are our selected stories from Ghana. My name is Sedinam Agbeshi, reporting for the Children's Day Special News Edition for Plus TV Africa. Thank you. Six health workers in Plato State have tested positive for the coronavirus disease. According to the Plato State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Ninkam Lara, the six health workers did not have any contact with any COVID-19 patients at the isolation centers. Dr. Lara says that out of the 86 COVID-19 cases recorded in the state, 27 have been discharged while two deaths have been recorded. He says the two persons died before their test results came out. Also, a pregnant woman at the Haipang Observation Center in Burkin Lali local government area of Plateau State has been delivered of a baby girl after spending 10 days at the center. The woman in her 30s had initially submitted herself willingly after suspecting she had symptoms of the coronavirus. According to the center coordinator, David Dama, the woman and baby are in good condition and will soon be discharged. She has tested negative to the coronavirus. In other in another related development, the National Assembly Caucus from Plateau State has made some donation to the state government. The caucus, led by deputy, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Idris Maje, says the donation is to help the state fight the COVID-19 pandemic. The caucus also commended the state government for the efforts put in place in tackling the pandemic, saying it has tremendously helped residents in the state. This is the latest news from Plateau State. I am Abraham Abdesalam reporting for Plus TV Africa's Children's Day Special News Edition. Have a good day. A pledge has been made by the Kenyan Ministry of Environment and Forestry to plant an additional 1.8 billion trees by 2022. As a move towards reversing biodiversity loss, this pledge was stated by Kariako Tobiko, Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of Environment and Forestry of Kenya. On the occasion of the International Day of Biological Diversity, reports reveal that some 420 hectares of forest have been lost through conversion to other land used since 1990. And although the rate of deforestation is said to be slowing down, the COVID-19 crisis appears to have thrown up the importance of nature con conservation, especially as relates to the ecosystem health. In other stories, 
Reverend Paul Mashira, the pioneer of what has come to be known as the Balcony to Balcony Church in Kenya, has taken to the streets amidst the COVID-19 pandemic to ensure that church goes on lockdown or no lockdown. It is a move that has gained momentum since his first service in mid-March when Kenya's first case of COVID-19 was found. Rather than concede the cutting of fellowship of believers, he has embraced the opportunity of going to the streets and says that in this, he is emulating the lifestyle of Jesus. The Balcony to Balcony movement has seen the street pastor visiting 16 locations so far and he says, he has observed growth in the children he interacts with. Those are our selected stories from Kenya. My name is Harry Margarita, reporting for Children's Day Special News Report. In the light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Bauchi State's Primary Healthcare Development Agency says the state government spends 1,500 naira per meal for admitted COVID-19 patients and provides them three meals each day. This is to make the patients feel at home and avoid approaches like in some other states. Bochi has also been taking steps to ease lockdown measures like lifting bans on religious gatherings since May the 21st, 2020. The Governor Bala Muhammad announced this during a stakeholders meeting on May the 20th and says the state is working towards lifting the lockdown completely. Governor Muhammad says the state has so far successfully managed the pandemic, which is evident in the massive number of recoveries in the state. This is the latest news from Bochi State. I'm Abu Jabbar Yaisa and reporting from Plus TV Africa's Children's Day Special News. Have a good day. The nation response to the COVID-19 pandemic in South Africa has seen the nation go from complete lockdown on March 27th with only essential services in operation. To an ease on lockdown on May 1st, with many businesses remaining partly or completely shut. By June 1st, South Africa will move from District Alert Level 4 to Level 3, which will allow 8 million people to return to work. The President was at pains to state that the ease of lockdown restrictions did not mean that the threat posted by the virus had abated. In another connected story, despite the ease of a lockdown to level three, President Cyril Ramaphosa confirmed that although sales of alcohol would be permitted during certain times, cigarettes would not go on sale, to dismay of millions of smokers. Indeed, it is rumored that the NDZ does not want to lift restrictions on smoking until level one disease is in place. The argument for the ban is to do with the health risks associated with smoking. Despite the president wandering in the, into clear the matter, it is evident that many are still not ready to let it lie. Those are our selected stories from South Africa. My name is Isabella Ali, reporting the Children's Day Special News Edition for Plus TV South Africa. <laughs> Zamfara State Government is demanding an apology from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control (NCDC). The state government questioned new coronavirus cases announced by the agency emanating from the state. The NCDC had announced on Monday, May the 18th, that Zamfara had recorded 10 new cases of the coronavirus. An announcement disputed by the Zamfara State Government. The State Commissioner for Health, Yahya Kunama, said that, said that the state has only two recorded cases of the virus as of Monday the 18th. In other news, the Governor of Zamfara State, Bello Matawale, says his administration has spent about 2.9 billion naira for feeding of Muslims faithful in the city during the Ramadan celebration period. Governor Matalwali said that 55.2 million naira was used to purchase about 280 cows which were subsequently distributed to civil servants and communities during the celebration. He also added that textiles were distributed to about 40 
thousand orphans across the state to aid them in sewing new clothes for the Sala celebration. My name is Daniel Oku, reporting from the Children's Day Special News Edition for Plus TV Africa. <music>